Welcome to the Fundamentals of Piano Theory Level 1 Unit 6 video. This unit is all about five finger patterns and triads. Should be mainly a review for you, but maybe some new things along the way as well. Remember your formula for a five finger pattern is first note, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. With that formula, you should be able to draw any of your five finger patterns. Make sure you pay special attention to which clef you are in. I'm getting a lot of homework where you are not paying attention to that clef. You're doing it in the wrong clef. So we're going to come in here and put in our notes. First note, whole step, whole step. That's going to require... sharp half step whole step remember you can always check yourself on the piano first note whole step whole step half step whole step Make sure you have followed that formula. Also remember my three rules. If you remember my three rules, you will not get these wrong. Rule number one, can't skip a letter. Rule number two, can't repeat a letter. And rule number three, you can't mix sharps and flats. Follow those three rules and this should be pretty easy for you. So page 20 is just writing out our five finger patterns in all these keys. Moving on to page 21, more of the same. Also for number two on page 21, we have to identify which five finger pattern that we are in. And our instructions say, remember that the lowest note is the root or is the answer for which five finger pattern we are in. From bass clef, bottom space A, skip down, I get F, F, G, A, B flat, C. F is the answer. You're in an F major five finger pattern. So that is what is happening on page 21. Page 22, we get introduced to the concept of a triad. A triad is just taking a five finger pattern, taking our second note and our fourth note out, taking finger number four and two, out and that gives us our triad. A triad is made up of a root, which is the bottom note, a third, which is the middle note, and a fifth, which is the top note. So we've taken our five finger pattern, we took out the second note, took out the fourth note, and we're left with the notes of our triad, root, third, and fifth. So on Page 22, we're just writing out our five finger patterns on the left and our triad on the right. Remember to follow your formula. First note, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. So that's all for page 22, 23, continuing doing that. 24, we're naming our triads. Remember, the name of our triad is based on the bottom note of the triad. Whatever that bottom note is the name of our triad. Triads come all together in a chord, or sometimes they come one at a time. call that a broken triad. So number five, we are naming what the broken triad is.
Okay, page 24, we're talking about tonic and dominant chords. The tonic chord is whatever key you are in. It's the same key note as your key. If we are in C major, C is our tonic. The dominant is whatever the fifth note of the key that you are in. So if we are in C major, C, D, E, F, G, G is our dominant. So they want us to name the tonic for each key and the dominant for each key. All right. So hint, all these notes will match all of these notes. All these notes will be a fifth above. Just do your formula, and you'll find that answer. In harmonic, F sharp is the same as G flat. So these are just inharmonic notes that they want you to come up with. Moving on to page 25. This is just a review of the circle of fifths. I've already made a video on the circle of fifths with my circle of fifths chant. So you can go back and review that if you would like. All right, going back to minor five finger patterns. The minor five finger pattern formula is First note, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. I don't know why they didn't print that for you on this page, but that is the formula for the minor five finger patterns. Another way to think of it is to take your major five finger pattern take your middle note played by your middle finger and lower it one half step to the left. Major, minor. And you can double check with your formula on your keyboard down here to make sure that you have the right answer. So on the left side, we're drawing the major five finger pattern. And on the right side here, we're going to draw the minor five finger pattern again. Notes 1, 2, 4, and 5 should match. Only the third note should be a half step lower on the right side. So that is what is happening for page 26. Page 27, continuing that, page 27, part 11. We are identifying from the fragment they give us which five-finger pattern are we in, Remember, the answer is the lowest note of those five notes. That will be your root. And then they want us to redraw that five finger pattern and label it on the right. Minor triad, same thing. Take your minor five finger pattern, take finger four and two out, and those are the notes to make your minor triad. Again, the root and the fifth will be the same as they are for major. Notice those notes match, those notes match. The middle note is just half a step lower for the minor triad. So we're going to draw out all of our major and minor triads on page 28. Page 29, number 13, we are identifying whether the note is whether the triad is major or minor. Remember, you can always find your answer by remembering the formula for a major triad versus a formula for a minor triad. The formula for a major triad is four half steps on the bottom, three half steps on the top. And the formula for a minor triad is three half steps on the bottom and four half steps on the top. So looking down here on the piano, we can see that we have our first note, one, two, 
three half steps on the bottom. And then we have one, two, three, four half steps on the top. So we know that we have a minor triad because we have three on the bottom, four on the top. So we just have to count our half steps. Remember, don't count your first note. First note, one, two, three half steps on the bottom. One, two, three, four half steps on the top. And that gets us a minor triad. My bottom note is G, so G minor triad. Now the book writes a capital G and a lowercase minor. I would probably get in the habit of drawing a lowercase for all my minor triads. That seems to be the common practice in the music theory world. So just a tip for you there. Okay, part 14. Question 14, we have broken triads. We have to identify what is the root. Again, the root is going to be the lowest note. But you might have a major, you might have a minor. So remember your formula, 4 and 3, 3 and 4. And then the last page is a maze. And we have to get from the head, the beginning, da capo, to the end, al fine. And we are following major triads. We are seeing which triads are major. So we start here with an F major triad, and we can either go to the, to the right or to the left. And we have to determine which one of these is the major triad. And when we've determined which one is the triad, we're going to color in the line. And you will find your maze will lead you all the way to Alfine. There's only one correct choice from one bubble to the next. So you have one, two, three options once you hit this bubble. And it branches out, and you should end at Alfine. Remember your formula. Major, four half steps, three half steps on the top. Minor, three half steps on the bottom, four half steps on the top. And that should do it for unit six. This is the longest unit in the book. So good luck with that. And go ahead and upload that so I can get them graded. Thank you.